And and so unfolds the latest chapter in the great career of Glenn Tilbrook. That tune opens up the new album, Transatlantic Ping Pong, which will be in stores uh, one week from today. We welcome Glenn Tilbrook to Studio A. Howdy. Hello, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. Uh, it's so great to have you here today. Thank you very much for having me here. And um, I'd like to, uh, uh, on behalf of all of us here, this is uh, Glenn Tilbrook and the Fluffers, uh, appreciate my, uh, uh, express my appreciation, rather, for having the four of us in here. Yeah, the Fluffers. Mm. And they're okay with that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering, uh, that was Simon the drummer there, uh, yeah, so you came up with the band name and... Uh, it, it, um, like a lot of things to do with my career, it made me laugh <laughs> and uh, but I thought, well, I'll just stick with that and see how, you know, see how it settles. Uh, actually, Stephen inadvertently came up with the last name that I liked, which is Seven Parts Milk, but that meant nothing to anyone except me. Um, <laughs> at least the fluffers make some other people laugh. And so it yeah, and seven parts. Yeah, seven parts milk makes people a little uncomfortable. I think. Yes. Because you're you're thinking, uh, oh, what? should Is I that? get this? I yeah. don't get it. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the it, fluffers. I mean, I have no discomfort with it. Certainly, as long as the band members have none. Uh, well, there's. Okay, wait, Lucy. Lucy on the basis. Uh, get it. Go into the mic there. There's yeah, a little. Look, yeah, go on. Here, here, here. Get, get around the mic. No, look, there's this a mic. Here. Okay, oh. here we go. Will this work? Yeah, there you go. Objection, Your Honor, to the name. Okay, objection. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> objection on the base. Objection Obje overruled. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn Tilbrook is with us here at 90.7 FM WFUV. And the title of the album, Transatlantic Ping Pong, uh, that right off the bat tells a certain story of where you've been at traveling it, it around. It does, yes. Um, inadvertently, that's how the album came about. I, I planned to I do some recording over here. I did some recording in Nashville um, when I was touring and in a solo acoustic style uh, towards the end of last year. I did uh, three days of recording in Nashville. And the other half of the the, the recording I did with uh, the, they weren't called the Fluffers at the time but we did it we did the other half of the record in England and then we booked to do some shows uh, we did the South by Southwest show in Austin we went to New Orleans and we did a show in, in New York as well a few months ago and I still hadn't finished the record so I was working on the record while we were over here doing dates and then after we got back to England I was still working on the record it was meant to be finished before of course uh, I didn't meet several deadlines so <laughs> it just ended up being recorded all over the place both here and uh, in the UK hence the rather literal title Trent's Atlantic Ping Pong <laughs> and we just heard the opening cut there from the CD called Untouchable, oh. which is a great tune. You guys are going to do a roll out a live set for us. Tell us what you want to start with. Okay, Simon, what do we want to start with? You were looking rather anxious to oh, me. I just wanted to know. Well, well, that's fair enough. Reinventing the wheel, sir. Reinventing the wheel is what we're going to do first. And the count for this. Are you all right with that, Steve? Very good idea, Simon. Steve, you do piano. Okay. I'll do piano. You do drums. Okay. What about Lucy? Oh, fluffer. I think I'll be the bass. <laughs> okay, that'll be the bass. One, two, three, four. Avoiding a wanted social contact. I've got a friend always there for me. An ideal partner when I'm on a work break Just like a sailor alone on the sea And I'm not reinventing the wheel I just like 
Outstanding. That's great. Glenn Tilbrook and the Fluffers, live on FUV today. What a great tune. Thank you. Oh, what do you want to play first now? Oh, uh, oh, we're going straight into another one. Okay, yeah, gonna, sure. Um, Simon, what are we going to play now? Domestic distortion. Social distortion. Domestic distortion. Social. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's what we'll do then. Here we go. <laughs>
<laughs> Very nice. That's great. Thank you. That's Glenn Tilbrook live on the radio with us here at FUV. Now, um, you know, the sound of your voice just brings a smile uh, to to a girl's face. And, of course, to sit here and see you when that voice comes out of your mouth, is uh, it's, just, it's a trip, man. I, it's just a bizarre experience. It's a... Uh, I hope it's a good trip rather than it, a bad one. No, it's an it's an it's an excellent trip, I can assure you. There's something though about your voice that's like that great old friend that you went to high school with that never did you wrong, always did you right. And Staying then in the background was occasionally annoying, but they are overall good humoured, <laughs> fun to have around and you know, when it got to it much he'd just leave the room and he'd still be there. You know, and then when you see him in the in the cafe, or you run into him at the store, you know it's it's a good experience. <laughs> well, you know? I like that. Of course, I'm you know, I would I, I'm deeply honoured by everything you've said. I like the fact that my let's say my voice is like a warm, friendly sock. It's like an old it's like an old sock that you're very familiar with, <laughs> and it's, you reach to your drawer and you think, "Shall I put my new socks on?" And you think, "No, I'm going to go for that comfy old sock." But you know what? That comfy old sock's very nice. It smells. Like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Simon. It smells in a rather enchanting way, is what it's you mean? I think. Nice. Yeah, it smells <laughs> very nice. And of course, the self-deprecating humor and the uh, uh, humbleness here, uh, coming from a man who wrote and/or co-wrote uh, "Black Coffee in Bed." Tempted is that love? Good, cool for cats. Goodbye, girl. I mean, bl- uh, the list just goes on and on and on. These these old friends for for many of us. Squeeze disbands uh, a couple of different times over the years. Mm. You set out on your own. Mm. Uh, the incomplete Glenn Tilbrook came out a couple of years ago, mm. and now this one, Transatlantic yeah. Ping Pong. Mm. I mean, as much as you are an old friend to us, mm. these songs and writing music and getting out and playing it, it's like. I, is it your lifeblood? I mean, you you can't imagine doing anything else. Is that uh, well, no, pretty I accurate? I can't imagine doing anything else. I'm, I'm a bit dull that way. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, I've got every intention of carrying on doing what I do because I really, really love it. I do love it, and uh, it's sort of hard. I find it really hard to explain to people how I take I take what I do writing and performing very seriously, but I don't take myself very seriously, and I don't see any. I don't have any problem with that. Uh-huh. I don't mind if other people do. Uh, I think there's, you know, I really like what I do and I put a lot of time and effort into it. But I think the, I'm very bad at explaining it. Mm-hmm. I'm a ba- bad at, I'm bad at um, telling people why I do what I do other than I feel driven to do it and I really enjoy doing it. And I'm lucky enough to be able to do it, you know, which is fantastic for a bloke of my age. <laughs> I'm still doing it. It's great. And this uh, new album, Transatlantic Ping Pong, is uh, released in stores one week from today. And this Friday night, folks, Glenn Tilbrook uh, in New Jersey at the Radisson Inn in Paramus, Friday night, June the 5th at 8 o'clock. I have to point out that uh, in case people are being entranced by the sound of me and the fluffers, that, that, that will be that's the only gig on this tour that's a solo acoustic gig. So uh, they will be hurtling down a highway somewhere while I'm ensconced in a luxury hotel probably um, doing my set live from a, a spa where uh, several people in bikinis will be sort of fanning me. Bikinis? Well, I, this is in... Uh, OK. Uh, yeah, uh, Actually, what I really mean is it's an acoustic festival and I'm doing it solo. <laughs> 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 We've got to drive two billion miles to... <laughs> to yes, in the luxury Cruise Master accommodation that we're all touring around in. Yeah, yeah tell us a little bit about this, because I've got to imagine to be able to, like, be a fly on the wall of Glenn Tilbrook's RV well, would t- be a pretty t- fun t- thing. Yeah, well, it would be, except you get swatted quite quickly, because mm-hmm. there's, no, there's not a lot of room with five of us in in, mm-hmm. in the bus and uh, space is at a premium and sometimes tempers get frayed every now and then punches fly just the other day uh, um, Simon the drummer hit me in a vicious um, way with a drumstick <laughs> threw it at my hand and caught my finger which is why this finger is is busted up now he and loved I, it. I felt lucky to get away with just that you know that, but that's just the sort of thing that happens on the bus it's uh, it's wow. of course a complete t- tissue of lies that's not what happened not what that's that's not. That's not <laughs> I I no, was. It in <laughs> <laughs> Tighten it. Does it hurt now? Does it hurt now? <laughs> <I am more. laughs> 
Oh, well, right. I threw my guitar up in the air at a gig, and it was in a wild frenzy of rock and roll abandon, and uh, I caught the guitar, uh, but the guitar also caught me on that finger and in a rather Ouch. violent, more, much more violent way than I'd anticipated. Very painful, and uh, so I have it bandaged up now. So not all glory, the rock star life. Hey, I mean, it's look. not all like... Sometimes it hurts. It's some, sometimes it hurts. Sometimes you have to give from places where you don't want to give, you know. It's actually amazing, though, for folks uh, listening on the radio right now. Glenn's the only guitar player. Steve's on keyboards. Lucy's on bass. Simon's on drums. So that last lead that you played was with uh, only four fingers, which it's, is uh, pretty cool. Well, three fingers well, three, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's a Django <laughs> Reinhardt style of uh, playing. That's why I was inspired by Django. As soon as I hurt my finger, I thought, well, he did it, even though he had years of practice with just three fingers. I'll get around it. It'll be fine. <laughs> what do you want to play for us now? I think we're going to uh, play uh, Neptune, and we're going to remember that I've, we've just uh, hastily cobbled together an arrangement, which I know that uh, people, some people in the room are worried about remembering, but it'll be fine. This is what Glenn does. Two seconds before a live radio. Let's do it differently. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> no, it's not live. <laughs> oh, isn't it? No, it is. I'm only kidding. Oh, <laughs> I was about to scram it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, brilliant. Right, uh, so this is Neptune. <laughs> Yeah. 
Glenn Tilbrook and the Fluffers. You have found the right guys to play with you, I'll tell you that. They're they're quite good, aren't they? Yes, I mean, yes, you know, indeed. They're all right. Really. No, that's a yeah, that's an excellent live vibe yeah. there. I called up about five other bunches of people before I got mm-hmm. these, but you know, they all said. Great stuff. What a nice live session. Glenn Tilbrook with us here at 90.7 FM WFUV. It's kind of a cool thing in that uh, with this new CD, you found a lot of like minds in Nashville to hook up with. Yeah, it was, it was uh, fantastic for me. I'd, um, I've always wanted to do, do some more work in America than I have done with Squeeze. We mm-hmm. only did one, one album partially um, in Los Angeles, and we did some mixing in, in New York. Um, so as I'm by myself now, I thought I had the chance to do that last year, and um, um, I, I, I knew um, Bill Davis from Desperate Rock, mm-hmm. um, and uh, I'd met him through uh, Steve Poltz, and he basically put the band together for me. I didn't know any of the other guys before I arrived, so it was a bit of a shot in the dark as to whether it worked. But they all worked really hard, and we came out of the stuff, you know, with some with some great stuff, just like with these guys here. You know, it was just fantastic. And I gotta believe too. I'm thinking specifically of of Bill Lloyd, also. Yeah. Who you gotta believe your work with Squeeze had a big influence on him, and now here he is walking into a recording studio where he's getting to play on new Glenn Tilbrook material. Yeah, it was. I can uh, imagine his jaw dropping in that moment. He was. Uh, yeah, he was. He was really uh, chuffed to be with me, and I was chuffed to have him too. I mean, he's had a, you know a lot of success in his own right. So yes, I, yes, indeed. It was. Uh, it was great to get him along. So yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm a lucky boy, really. Although, of course, using the boy, the term boy loosely, because I am 46 years old, and really, I can't refer to myself as a boy anymore. But I suppose <laughs> I do that because being a musician, in a way, is like uh, having an extended adolescence or arrested development. Some would say, <laughs> or perhaps some would say that applies specifically to me and not other musicians. I don't know. I'm not in a position to comment on that. All I can say is that it's beautiful. And this is your self-diagnosis. Yeah, I think so. Stream of unconsciousness. Stream of half consciousness. No consciousness at all, but it still keeps coming out. What are you talking about? Someone reach for that faucet and turn it off, please. It's a good thing we're not live on the radio right now. That's all I can say. My name is Glenn and I am funky. (laughs) Uh, Sorry, everyone. I can actually see my own band looking at their feet. I know. I know (laughs) that. It's time to stop. Sorry, ask me another question. Uh, Me? Oh, no. Am I going to play something? (laughs) I am going to ask you another question. The, um... Uh, the, the the issue of influences now, I'm also thinking of artists like Amy Mann and stuff that you've gotten to work with. Mm. What have those collaborations meant to you recently? Um... You know, the collaborations I had on on, uh, Transatlantic Ping Pong were, were for the most part, closer to to home for me. Mm. Um, People that I... That, that I like and work in close proximity with geographically, with the exception of Steve Poltz, who mm-hmm. I did uh, Hot Shaved Asian Teens with the catchily titled Hot Shaved Asian Teens. <laughs> uh, Steve uh, Steve did a tour with me a couple of years ago, and he's fantastic. He's such a brilliant lyricist. He's such a great bloke. Really funny on stage, but really sharp, really sharp lyrics. And uh, that song in particular, although we're not going to play it, I, I love the song because it's not about, it's not what it seems to be, it's not about what it seems to be, right. judging from the title. It's actually it's a very clever lyric, and uh, I stand by it 100%. <laughs> Steve Poltz was here just a couple of weeks ago. Was he? So yeah, we know and love. Oh, cool. Yep, know and love. Mm. Um, so uh, what do you want to play for us now? Uh, how about we delve into the Squeeze back catalogue? We, tra- we travel back in time... Not one, not two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Some 23 years ago now. Uh, 1981 is a year. Skinny ties are in. Oh, I'm a bit thinner, but I don't mind that. It's a song that I didn't actually sing, but uh, Paul Carrick did a really great job on. Um, and uh, I love this song. It's Tempted. And it goes something like this. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Get out! 
carousel People keep on crowding I'm wishing I was well Set a slow occasion There's no story I could tell And my best I had empty pocket A foot without a sock Your body gets from the school side I thought I'd go for the car Glenn Tilbrook and the Fluffers with us live on FUV this afternoon here at 90.7 FM. New solo Glenn Tilbrook album in stores one week from today. It's called Transatlantic Ping Pong. You can find out more at Glenn, that's two N's, glenntilbrook.com and or compassrecords.com. Uh, what a great live session. Thank you one and all. Thank you very much. Hey, uh, one of the things we love to do around here is uh, talk music with other artists who better to do it with. Uh, I'm curious, Glenn, how you would characterize the music scene now uh, back home in in London as it relates to what's happening here in the States, because I know you've been traveling around a lot and mm. popping in at a bunch of uh, radio stations and been touring. Yeah. What do you see uh, uh, similarities and differences are between, uh, between us and them these days? Uh, uh I see more difference than similarity. Mm-hmm. Actually, uh, I think that uh, that uh, general mainstream radio here and mainstream radio in the UK have gone in different directions, mm-hmm. and so, and I think also uh, something that's true for both countries is that, is that there's a sort of more conservative musical climate, which means I think there's a lot of great stuff around, and. There always has been, really, but I think it, it stands less of a chance of getting through now than, say, at the time when Squeeze came up. I think that at uh, that time it was a lot easier for things to break through, firstly, and secondly, I think that companies backed people over a slightly longer term, mm-hmm. so they gave them a chance to develop. Now, if you don't make it after one album, you're out on your ear, which is really, you know, is, is just stupid. It's not, not a way of developing talent at all. You know, so... So that's the downside of it. The good side of it is it's still there, and I think it's like, you know, the old toothpaste tube theory. If you block one end up, so eventually it'll pop out somewhere else and come out. You know, I, I, but I do think it's harder. I do think mm-hmm. it's harder for people coming up now. And how about playing live when you play live back home in, in London? What's the vibe like versus the tour you've been on now here? Actually, we had a miserable vibe in London <laughs> this time. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, no, I, no. <laughs> I, what I really mean to say is that the, the hall we played at was a really weird hall. It was mm-hmm. a lovely hall. I think it would be great if you were a string section or something, but oh, not gotcha. if you were a loud band. We played at the Bush Hall in London. I think that's the first and last time we'll play there. We mm-hmm. get a great reception there. It's really, it's, it's a great, great crowd. But uh, it's very refreshing to be over here. I think I'm perceived in a slightly different way here. And uh, I love coming over here. It's great. I love you. 
your <laughs> mutual baby your your history is so remarkable the folks that uh you've gotten to hang out with i mean richard and linda thompson uh back in the 70s mm-hmm. over there and uh of course john kale and elvis costello dave edmonds how important um is uh staying in touch with music these days for you i mean how do you keep up and 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 is that part of what keeps your juices flowing too oh uh, yeah it is uh, it's always you know random things you hear on mm-hmm. the radio or stuff that, that spark you off and uh or going to i make a point of going to the glastonbury festival every time we're mm-hmm. playing there this year oh so, that's great uh, that's a great place to go and see. I mean, that's see huge. Things. That's like the biggest or the big daddy of them it all, is right? Absolute, it's absolutely absolutely. How many people? Huge. But uh, Well, I think they keep it at 110,000. Uh-huh. Am I completely wrong? Something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's, it's a unique festival, and it's managed to retain the spirit of, of what it was when it began, which is a very small festival, and it's grown incrementally over the years rather than, right, we'll do a huge festival. So it sort of kept something of the sort of community vibe about it plus it's very diverse musically i really like all the different sorts of stuff they have on it's not a rock festival a folk festival dance you know they they have all sorts of stuff there and that's great because you come across stuff that you wouldn't you know perhaps never necessarily uh, encounter right and to uh get to enjoy things like that in the live context is so great yeah 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 it is it is fantastic there can be no better environment than than there well i think here they're uh having a crack at doing a festival the way they happen overseas with this bonnaroo festival oh. which is happening in tennessee uh in a couple of weeks oh. and i think the whole uh, thought behind it and the folks who are behind it are really trying to create a festival that has more in common with the great festivals in the UK and stuff. Right. And I'm actually going. It's 100,000 people. Oh, fantastic. And it's a very eclectic uh, lineup, multiple stages, and it's in the middle of uh, Tennessee. Or I don't know, the middle. It might be in the end of Tennessee. You know, it's right, in Tennessee right, somewhere. Right. Uh, Bonnaroo. But it sounds really cool. But I was going to ask you if you had any advice for me because we're renting a big R V oh, to drive there in it. Yes, yes. So any any tips you have for me? Make sure you fill up your water tanks. Fill, fill up, up your water fill tanks. Fill up your water tanks, mm-hmm. drain the other ones and make sure you've got a good good supply of food and uh, enough power for your generator, then you'll be laughing. No how do wait, how do you yeah. know? No bridges? No bridges. No, oh, watch watch don't Oh go watch on any out parkways. for low bridges. Yeah, no parkways. Yeah. How big is yours? Uh RV? Well, it's eleven foot six tall. I know that because I religiously look at every bridge and see how tall it is. How long is it? Uh, 30 feet, I believe. Plus, we've got a trailer on the back with all our equipment in. Oh, so right. It's lovely. We're a, we're a self-contained unit. <laughs> Mostly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. So we asked you for a guest DJ pick, so tell us what you, uh, what you chose for us here. Well, I picked a song that I've only heard once when I was... We were doing... In fact, we were doing a radio show in London, and, uh, and this track played. And I thought it sounded like him, and then I thought it wasn't him, because it sounded too happy. Uh, but in fact, it did turn out to be him, and he is happy, and I'm very glad, because it's my pal, Ron Sexsmith, uh, with, what's the song called? Uh, From Now On. See, I told you I hadn't heard it much, but anyway, it's great. Have a listen. Thank you very much, folks. <laughs> That's Glenn Tilbrook, our guest here today on FUV. Ron Sexsmith here on FUV and New Day From Now On from his new CD, Retriever. And uh, that pick from our guest today at FUV, Glenn Tilbrook. And big thanks to Glenn Tilbrook and the Fluffers for a great live session from Studio A. Catch Glenn Tilbrook's solo acoustic this Friday night at the Radisson Inn in Paramus, New Jersey. That shows at 8 o'clock. And uh, keep in mind his new solo album, Transatlantic Ping Pong, the well-titled new solo album, uh, in stores one week from today on Compass Records.